This tutorial is going to introduce Steinberg's Cubase software. It doesn't assume any prior knowledge or experience of Cubase, but it does assume that you have uh, a good level of computer literacy and that you're willing to uh, seek out further information from the Cubase documentation and from other online sources. The Cubase manuals can be found uh, from inside the software by looking in the help menu under documentation. You've got the operation manual, uh, the menu reference and various other sources of information in there. So in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to make a new project in Cubase. Uh, we're then going to have a look at some of the main features of the Cubase graphical user interface uh, and then we're going to see how to save and back up the project properly. So uh, this is what you see when you first open Cubase. It's uh, more or less an empty window, uh, and that's because we don't have a project open. So first of all, we're going to go to the file menu and create a new project. So choose new project from the file menu. Uh, I'm going to choose an empty project. And the first thing that Cubase asks you to do is select a directory. Uh, so what we need to do here is uh, create a folder on one of the hard disks of the computer and inside this folder is where we're going to save the Cubase project file and any uh, other files related to that project, so recorded audio for example. I'm going to use the D, uh, the D drive on the computer, I'm going to click create to create a folder and I'm going to call it my Cubase project. So it's created a new folder, click OK. So if I uh, momentarily minimize Cubase there and have a look at the D drive, what we can now see is that there is a folder on the D drive called My Cubase Project. Uh, and Cubase has automatically uh, created a folder called Audio. This is where it's going to put any uh, audio that we record uh, in our project. I'm going to go back to Cubase now and the first thing to do, the very first thing to do before anything else is save the project. We've just created the folder so far so I'm going to go back to the file menu and choose save. I could also use the control S shortcut. We're inside the my Cubase project folder so I'm now going to create the Cubase project file, which is called my Cubase project file. If we then return to the D drive, same location, we now see that there is a file called my, my Cubase project file .cpr, and that's the project file. What we're seeing now uh, in Cubase is uh, the project window. This is the main window in Cubase. Across the top of the project window here, uh, we can see the ruler. And this is the project timeline. And if I right click on it, um, I can choose uh, whether I want to measure time in bars and beats or uh, in seconds, minutes and seconds. So here we can see seconds across the top. Um, and there are various other options here, um, but bars and beats and seconds are probably the main ones that you're going to use. What we can see here is uh, the transport bar, which has uh, start, stop, fast forward, rewind, and record controls. Uh, and if I press start, uh, we can see that the project cursor starts advancing along the timeline. If I right click in this area here, which is the track list, it's empty at the moment, I can create a track. As you can see from the context menu that appears, there are lots of different types of track that you can create, uh, but the ones that you'll use most often to begin with are uh, the audio track and the MIDI track. And I'm going to create one of each. So create an audio track choose whether it's mono or stereo and hit OK and I'm also going to create a MIDI track.
Um, when I select a track by clicking on it, um, I can see that track settings in this part of the project uh, window, which is called the inspector. Um, an audio track uh, can be used to record live audio from a microphone uh, or an instrument. You can also import existing audio to an audio track, either from sound files or from a CD. Uh, a MIDI track, on the other hand, is used to send MIDI events, MIDI instructions, to a synthesizer. So Cubase uh, lets you combine uh, recorded sound and synthesized sound on the same timeline. If you double click on the name of a track, uh, you can name it. So I'm going to call my audio track, for example, uh, let's say lead vocal. And I'll call the MIDI track piano synth. It's very important to understand the difference uh, between an audio track and a MIDI track. Um, an audio track uh, is used to play back actual recorded audio. So uh, what you have on the timeline uh, in an audio track is uh, actual sound files or parts of a sound file. And when you play back your project, uh, the sound comes directly from the audio track. Uh, a MIDI track, on the other hand, uh, doesn't contain any audio at all. Uh, instead, it contains the various MIDI instructions that get sent to a synthesizer so that when you play back your project, those instructions get sent to the synth and it's the synthesizer that, uh, that produces the sound. Very important distinction to understand. And so finally, um, I'm going to uh, save the project, having created the tracks, and close Cubase. Now having closed Cubase, I'm going to go back to my project folder, my Cubase project, and copy it to my pen drive. You notice that uh, I'm copying the whole folder, not just the project file. So that means that um, my project's backed up. Um, and it also means that uh, if I want to work on a different computer next time that has Cubase installed, I can copy the uh, folder back from my pen drive onto the local disk of the computer and work on it there. Cubase is one of a number of audio applications known as sequencers. Now, a sequencer um, allows you to arrange uh, sonic events on a timeline in a sequence. Um, so what I'm going to do now is open a very short example uh, project. I have here is uh, two audio tracks. The first audio track is a female voice. We can see three separate audio events on this track. The second audio track is uh, a city soundscape recording. There are also two MIDI tracks which have uh, two copies of exactly the same MIDI events. In this case it's an ascending C major scale and uh, each of the MIDI tracks gets sent to a different synthesizer so we hear different sounds replicating the same MIDI events. And as I play back the project we're going to see the uh, project cursor advancing across each of the events and as it does we hear them. I'm speaking to a microphone. I do not know who I am, yet I desperately want self-definition. I'm listening now. Of course, the whole point of a sequencing application is that you can uh, change the order of the events. So if I uh, shuffle these around a little bit, and maybe make that shorter, I can also go into uh, the MIDI events and change them. So for example, maybe I'll raise this scale, missed the last note there. And then of course, if we play back, we'll hear the difference. I do not know who I am, yet I desperately want self-definition. I'm speaking to a microphone. I'm listening now.